So my name is Jared Towers, I'm a cetacean researcher, primarily focused on the study of killer whales. I've been working with killer whales for most of my life and over the last 10 or 15 years I've studied several different populations of orca in several different oceans and countries. Here where we have resident killer whales as well as big killer whales or transient killer whales, much of the focus is on resident killer whales because we can hear them, we can see them on a regular basis. And there's, there's less emphasis on studying big killer whales because they do show up a little bit less frequently, but over the course of the year, they're here year-round. What we found over time is that this type of killer whale actually is its own ecotype. It's very different from the resident killer whale. And in honor of the man, uh, the first scientist who described this type of killer whale and did the first studies on them, uh, it was proposed that transients would be called Biggs killer whales after Dr. Michael Big. Unlike resident killer whales that prey almost exclusively on large salmon species, Biggs killer whales prey almost exclusively on marine mammals like harbor seals, harbor porpoise, Dallas porpoise, Pacific white sided dolphin, California sea lion, stellar sea lion, and even sometimes whales larger than themselves. So, unlike resident killer whales that travel in large groups, big killer whales tend to travel in much smaller groups. And the reason for this is because they're all focusing on the same prey item, whereas resident killer whales are individually catching their own fish a lot of the time. There are a few physical differences between big killer whales and resident killer whales. And one of them is that the dorsal fins of adult female big killer whales tend to be somewhat more pointy than the dorsal fins of adult female resident killer whales. Uh, one of the main differences, however, is that big killer whales are much more robust than resident killer whales. They're much larger. Um, adult males and females tend to be up to a meter longer in big killer whales than they are in resident killer whales. And because of this difference in body size, and the blows of big killer whales often tend to be much bigger than those of resident killer whales. Uh, big killer whales are quite a bit more quiet than resident killer whales. Uh, they are much uh, less chatty because their prey can hear them. That said, big killer whales are quite social and at times they're very vocal, uh, especially when they're interacting with other families or right after they've made a kill. Big killer whales being the quintessential killer whale often get mislabeled as ruthless killers, but just like resident killer whales, big killer whales also live in family groups um, whereby the members of that family often spend their entire lives together and, and they're both carnivores preying on other animals to survive. The work that my colleagues and I do studying big killer whales along the west coast of North America obviously leads to a greater understanding of these animals, but perhaps more importantly, I think it leads us to a place where we can learn how to coexist with these animals in a healthy 